Activated. Analyzing. Update complete. What's up, Lore Masters? This video is brought to you by the Council of the Lore. Patrons who become Counselors of the Lore have the opportunity to request videos be brought to the top of the list. And this is one of those videos. If you're interested in having your video brought to the top of the list, check out patron.com forward slash lore reloaded to find out how you can become a counselor. With that out of the way, let's just get into it. The construction of the Delta Flyer was a response to the, well, frankly, inadequacies of the shuttles that were produced by Starfleet, especially for the Intrepid class ship. The shuttles simply weren't meant for harsh or difficult situations, because since Voyager is definitively, I mean totes dog, a science vessel, of course it wouldn't be outfitted with shuttles to take on dangerous and scientific missions. The shuttle was developed and constructed by Bolana Torres, Tom Paris, Tuvok, Harry Kim, and Seven of Nine, all from Voyager. The ship's construction was authorized due to the loss of a multispatial probe inside a gas giant where none of the other shuttles could get to, and the arrival of a hostile alien species known as the Milan. And of course, they tied it into some kind of environmental malevolence by the species themselves, because why not? It's Voyager. Due to the Milan threat, ship construction would be continually pushed up, Though even though the crew of Voyager would work night and day to get the shuttle out as quickly as possible, the Milan were seemingly always one step ahead of them. And while it came down to the wire, the shuttle was constructed in time and was able to retrieve the multispatial probe. Well, I mean, the shuttle would be mostly intact. Some of the bulkheads blew open, allowing the atmosphere in, but the crew of the flyer was luckily saved by Chief Engineer Torres using some kind of tech tech to create shields to ensure that the places where the bulkheads opened up didn't hit the crew. The Delta Flyer would be used extensively throughout Voyager's tenure within the Delta Quadrant. Among the many missions the shuttle would be tested, it would investigate the Terrasphere, was nearly destroyed when caught in an ion storm and had to crash land on a planet with Samantha Wildman, Paris, and Tuvok, and even had engagements against the Borg. Though, you know, the shuttle did crash a lot. I mean, like a lot. Most of Voyager's shuttles did. Huh. Back to the Flyer's past, it would guide Voyager through quantum slipstream trials and even had a Borg transwarp coil installed on it for use. And honestly, there are many, many more missions that the shuttle participated in. I'll link Memory Alpha below so you can take a look at these missions, but if I was to name them all, you guys would pass out from boredom. So focusing on the shuttle and its design itself, it could accommodate up to five people extremely comfortably. This was of course against the norm when most shuttles were considered more compact, keeping all of the officers together. The bridge of the Delta Flyer class would include workstations for tactical, operations, and engineering. The helm would be at the front while tactical, ops, and engineering would be behind and to the sides of the helm itself. On an interesting note, on the original Delta Flyer, and probably the Delta Flyer 2, but unlikely any other models that would be constructed from Starfleet, Tom Paris installed knobs and levers to the right side of the pilot's seat. He would use this in tandem with the Lakar's console. Due to adding these knobs, though, he would be chastised by Tuvok. Now let me take a moment to really address this. First, I do think it was stupid of Tom to use the types of levers and buttons that he did. He styled it after a silly hologram program that he enjoyed, not for functionality. That said, you know what has a higher chance of working over an LCD console? Knobs and buttons. And levers. Say what you want about the NX-01 Enterprise and the original series Enterprise, but it made much more sense that they would be using buttons and knobs and levers. Especially given the failure rates and catastrophic issues if you couldn't see what the Lacar's console was saying when you looked down at it. Of course, I'm sure in the comments, people will basically relate the LCD consoles to magic and thus explain how they wouldn't fail, or how they would be as good as knobs, but come on. It just makes more sense to have controls like the ones that we see here in the Delta Flyer and on the NX-01 Enterprise and original series Enterprise than just a straight LCD LeCar's console. But anyway, unlike a lot of other shuttles, the Flyer would also feature an aft compartment that allowed a retractable biobed for medical situations and accommodations meant for stabilizing patients. There would be additional stations on either side of the biobed, a comm unit, and replicators at various places along the aft compartment as well. To be honest, we don't know exactly what the dimensions of the Flyer series are. In fact, there is some debate since the ship apparently can't fit into some of the shuttle bays that it is seen fitting into on Voyager. I'm going to link a very interesting article and breakdown by X Estri Scientia. 
However, the Too Long Didn't Read part of the website deduces that the flyer is most likely 21 meters long, 12.2 meters wide, and 5.3 meters tall. The aerodynamic design of the flyer would allow it to move swiftly and operate in both space, atmospheric conditions, and underwater. The flyer series also has retractable warp nacelles. Unfortunately, the warp speed of the vessel has never been determined as of the upload of this video, but Beta Cannon states that it had a cruising speed of warp 3 and a max speed of warp 5. This isn't unreasonable as the speeds of most shuttles range from warp 3 to 5 anyway, so it does make a lot of sense. Additionally, the flyer's impulse engines would not initially be able to retract, but later versions of the flyer would institute the ability just like we have with the warp nacelles. The flyer sports eight phaser arrays, photon torpedoes, and what is deemed quote-unquote Borg-inspired weapons. These Borg weapons include photonic missiles. Now, whether this is the only Borg-inspired weapon the ship has or not is still up in the air. Especially when they use the word weapons, as in the plural, to reference these type of Borg technology, but we never really see anything else that is out of the norm for normal Starfleet shuttles. Later iterations, i.e. the Delta II and other Delta flyers that would come out, would have pulse phase weapons. The ship would additionally have two torpedo launchers on either side of its forward-facing arc and a single launcher on the ventral side. The shielding of the flyer would initially be immersive shielding and the unimatrix shield. However, it would be modified to have the same multi-adaptive shielding that we see on Voyager. For those who enjoy their beta cannon, in the novel, Over a Torrent Sea, the Delta Flyer shuttles were called quote-unquote flyer classes and at least one was on the USS Titan. Star Trek Online allows for the Delta Flyer type shuttle, which are known as Delta classes, and the original Delta Flyer made an appearance in Star Trek Voyager Elite Forces, which is a pretty good game if you guys have never played it. For those who want to be on Jeopardy, the Delta Flyer appears 29 times in Voyager according to Memory Alpha. So, what do you guys think? Do you like the Flyer? Let me know in the comments below. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. This is the YouTube cut. If you want to see the video with additional clips that add more context, please consider becoming a patron for as low as a dollar a month. Additionally, you can make special requests that will go to the top of the line if you join the Council of the Lore tier. Also, want to tell everyone you're a lore master? Check out the merch store in the description below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next. Lore Reloaded.